I, I don't want to discredit art. <laughs> discredit art. Hey, listen, art is a lie and nothing is real. Oh, if there's no. one thing that everyone should take away from this podcast, <laughs> it's that. I'm trying to get art to sponsor me. Oh, no. <laughs> Today, today's video uh, is sponsored by art. Use promo code. Use promo code Sally Doritos to get 50% off of art. <laughs> And welcome to Let's Be Best Friends, a podcast where I talk to people that I barely know and try and convince them to be my new best friends, because in times like these, who needs enemies? My guest today is a fellow streamer and graphic designer, Bears and Beats. Hello. Hello. I love, I love your very real apartment. I, I have it's to so, say. It's so real. Uh, <laughs> it's wild how in Ohio, I mean, it's 7 p.m. right now, and it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful, beautiful and sunny. It's a beautiful day. It has never rained nor snowed in this apartment. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Well, in or around the apartment. I guess it would be very weird if it had, in fact, snowed in the apartment. <laughs> yeah, my chair just kind of like naturally appears and disappears, too, which is really nice. Yeah, it's one of those uh, new camo <laughs> chairs I've heard so much about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's big on the merch websites right now. If you go on Streamlabs, <laughs> they're trying to get the branded camo uh, chairs. Never need a green screen mm -hmm. again, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the show. I'm very glad to have you. Um, so you're, you're our first graphic designer to be on the show. Oh, wow. That's wow. exciting. I know it's a lot of pressure. I know that. <laughs> I don't know how competitive that scene is. Uh, I mean, it's fairly competitive. It's also, I think I probably have an identity crisis when I say what I do because I came from graphic design and then I'm currently actually more a UX UI designer. So I'm. Um, so I know what that means for sure. But just for people mm -hmm. who like, who, you know, <laughs> some people might not know what that means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is a UX UI designer? So basically, I'm the person that you might get mad at if you go to a website and you can't use it or like you can't figure out what you're supposed to do to get to the goal okay. uh, that you came to the website for. Um, so I get to design really cool like tables uh, and but buttons and <laughs> we, we love tables. Can I say that here at here at twitch.tv slash old king cake and or the let's your best friends podcast. We love tables. Love them. If the there's, if there's yeah. one thing that I've always said, it's my undying love for tables. <laughs> this this website needs to look more like Excel, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If every website was Excel, I'd never get lost again. <laughs> Exactly. I, am, I am such an absolute boomer when it comes to websites. I will spend maybe five minutes trying to figure something out on a website and I will get immediately frustrated and look for a phone number. <laughs> and then I'll just like I'll just keep ringing them until someone picks up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, my job exists so that uh, so that you hopefully don't even have to call that phone number. <laughs> And just putting call centers out of business. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I need like someone. I think that someone needs to be there for the call centers. No one ever thinks about the guys who call mm -hmm. you for duct cleaning, but they need a job, too. You can't just go to the job, the duct cleaning website. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know what duct cleaning is, but yeah. <laughs> I don't. Have you never gotten those calls? No. <laughs> wait, wait, whoa, wait. Oh, my God. Maybe it's a Canadian. Duct cleaning? Thing. Like du duct like with a T. Oh, okay. I, I was just picturing like you, <laughs> you got a duck. <laughs> you got a duck. You need clean. You got a dirty duck. <laughs> we will call you every single day until <laughs> we can clean your duck. That was the name of the show originally is you got a dirty duck. That's, that's a fun fact. That was the original name of the show. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good name. Yeah. It I don't was, know what's true. Neck and neck with Let's Be Best Friends. Well, this one was a little mm -hmm. bit easier to put on a t-shirt. <laughs> duck neck and duck neck. <laughs> So, here on Let's Be Best Friends, if this is your first time uh, watching, if you're here live at twitch.tv slash Kate, we thank you for being here. If you're listening in the future, I'm sure something <laughs> horrible has happened, so I'm glad that you're here to, you know, take your mind off some stuff. Here on Let's Be Best Friends, we like to have as cool, comfortable, calm conversation with our guests as possible. I like to make people feel as comfortable as possible, and the easiest way to do that is to get them doing something that they enjoy. So we get people doing a hobby and, and bears. I asked you what you wanted to do, and you had the idea of... of Doing a little, doing a little doodling. 
Yeah, I am bad at hobbies. I just always turn them into my job. <laughs> Retweet. So, <laughs> so I replied a week later and I said, I don't know, I can draw. <laughs> um, and we love we love drawing here. Let me tell you, I am always very because I'm a very hobbyist drawer. Like I like okay. drawing, but I have never looked at something I've drawn and been like, oh, my, I should get paid for this. Can you imagine <laughs> if I got paid for this? I can't say that I have either, to be honest. <laughs> it's also I think I always get very intimidating by things that fall into the art or design category because right. I feel like I should be good at it. Okay. So I <laughs> like the idea of doodling is even overwhelming to me sometimes because I feel like if this is bad, then what <laughs> what is my life? <laughs> then what am I what am I even doing here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, we f we're figuring out what we we're going to work on. And you suggested you had some you had some little emote sketches that you had to work on. Yeah. So let's um, let's look. Let's take a look. What are we working on today? OK. I mean, do you want uh, do you, I could show some previous emotes that I did recently um, and then dive into a new one that I could yeah. work on a little bit if that works. Yeah, I'd love that. Uh, OK, so disclaimer, I'm not an emote artist. Um, I have. <laughs> I have an advertising art degree, two years, uh, associate degrees in the house. Let's go. Um, <laughs> two year diploma, let's go. Uh, and I don't know, I, I'm sort of new to the digital uh, medium too, so my process is a hot mess. But, <laughs> um, I am trying to do some more emote stuff just like for free for myself and for friends mm -hmm. uh so this is one that i did for sneak bike i love this little guy did we ever give him <laughs> an official name i don't remember uh, i think it might be remy maybe i, I, I don't remember. know how that was, was decided though it was up in the air for a while <laughs> there the was a debate was, yeah it was actually it was literally gonna be up in the air but that was too long <laughs> <laughs> yeah up in the air the raccoon it didn't get quite past the beta stage <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't know. Here's some like rough sketch stuff. Um, the nice thing about Procreate, which I'm sure people might know if you've used Procreate, mm. uh, it shows the whole history of your document. So um, a lot of like, you can see a lot of indecisiveness probably with uh, the different design decisions I landed yeah. on. I think it's cool to see though, because even even just like the little things, like the shading kind of changes, that like beyond just you know, I feel like when people think of art, especially like digital art, because it's so easy, just like you know, you just control Z and move on with your day, right? Yeah. But like, I feel like people don't think about the fact that it's not just the shapes and the colors that change, but it's all the little, the little itty bitty things like that, like the shine on an eye or like just the different color on the fur or whatever. Yeah, it's really tricky with emotes, too, which um, it, it just feels like a whole different, well, profession in and of itself, which I guess it kind of has become one almost mm -hmm. uh, where you can get, you know, professional emote commissions uh, executed. I thought it was a bad sentence. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was not a sentence. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, because it, it shows up so tiny on a screen. So you really have to be sure like the colors and the contrast and the style actually pops and gets across an emotion. <laughs> gets um, across an emoticon. Emoticon. <laughs> someone should coin that. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone should. Maybe it should be called something having to do with emotion. <laughs> uh, should think of that. Someone should message <laughs> Twitch and let them know. <laughs> yeah. OK, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to my people. <laughs> The very, the very connected bears and beats we have on the show. I'm going to call up John Q. Twitch. <laughs> I have like change. over 200 followers on Twitter. It's not a big deal. Not a big not deal. A big deal. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> I tweeted the other day and got three likes in an hour. Not a big deal. <laughs> It's very chill. That's a lot of tweets. It's a lot of it's a lot of tweets. That's a lot of. Do you ever go on your social media and look at how many like posts or tweets you've made and just go like, "Holy shit, what am I spending my time with in my life?" <laughs> I actually I did that with my personal Twitter because I was looking back at, at it and just wondering, should I delete this? I don't use it anymore. Yeah. Because um, I just like migrate all of my socials to my stream socials, mm -hmm. which is probably healthy. Um, <laughs> But I, I, I don't know. Some of them are so stupid that I was just like, I can't get I can't just delete this. I can't just delete That's... this tweet where I tried to get Doritos to, <laughs> to sponsor me. Like, yeah, exactly. What am I if I don't have could, that tweet? It could still happen. It could. I'm, <laughs> hey, listen, John, <laughs> that's sexist. This is Sally Doritos, if you're listening, 
Sally Doritos. We're open to sponsorships here on Let's Do Best Friends. I Absolutely. am a cheap buy. I will say it. I am a, I am a cheap <laughs> buy. Okay. Send me one bag. Done. I will paint my room red and orange. You'll change the channel to Old King Dorito. Done. Old, old, old Dorito. <laughs> uh, just Dorito. I'll just call it Doritos. <laughs> they might want to workshop it. I don't know how flattering old <laughs> old Doritos. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> the that's the main problem that I realized with <laughs> with my branding is that old kind of features into it. So mm -hmm. anytime something like that happens, where it's like that, like old King Doritos, it's like that's not that's nothing. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's the opposite of what people would want. <laughs> So did you get into digital art because of like being interested in doing emotes or was it kind of like the other way around or? Uh, so in graphic, like in my graphic design history, I did do digital art, but from like the perspective of Ill using Adobe products, so Illustrator and Photoshop and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I definitely feel like with getting an iPad, uh, it has improved my a willingness to, I guess, draw okay, <laughs> more yeah. often because um, it feels like it's so much more accessible to just kind of like sketch, sketch stuff and then undo, as you mentioned. Um, whereas before, if I would doodle something and like want to make something of it, I would need to, you know, draw it out, erase, <laughs> draw yeah. it out, erase, use tracing paper, refine it, uh, use more tracing paper <laughs> and then like scan it in, uh, bring it into Illustrator, use live trace with like special settings. Um, so it turns vector and then like maybe put it on something. Yeah. And um, then maybe do it someday or it's just going to rot in the pictures folder. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Untitled <laughs> five <laughs> in the downloads folder. Uh, it goes yeah. in the in the in the folder that all creators know very well that just says WIP. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it has been a little more motivating to do stuff for because I also feel like it's easier to do work for other people than for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I do like doing stuff for my own stream, but I'm if like I don't know, if Sneak Bike needs an emote or something, I feel like I prioritize that over it because right. it's it's just more satisfying to do work for other people. So when it comes to doing work for other people, are you the kind of person who's more likely to be like, you know, just take like a basic idea and kind of run with it? Or are you the kind of person who likes kind of like step by step by step? Because I, I, I feel like artists are, are one or the other. You know what I mean? Like some people you go mm. up to them and you're like, I just kind of like my my channel. I, I play basketball. And so I just need some emotes. And then they're like, say no more. I got you. I'm going to go make you five emotes of, of basketballs and then we're going to be good to go. Mm hmm. I so I think from the design background, what I liked about design is that it brings like mm, more of like strategy to art. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't want to discredit art. <laughs> discredit art. Hey, listen, art is a lie and nothing is real. Oh, no. If there's one thing that everyone should take away from this podcast, it's that. <laughs> I'm trying to get art to sponsor me. Oh no. <laughs> Today, today's video uh, is sponsored by art. Use promo code. Use promo code Sally Doritos to get 50% off of art. Uh, but yeah, so I, I come from like mm, the background of overthinking things a little bit, or at least like trying to give meaning to things that might not inherently have meaning mm -hmm. to them uh, with the design side of, I guess, doing art things um and also the experience of like sometimes people know what they want and they don't know how to articulate it right so trying to like unwrap that um is also an approach that i like to take so that you don't just go down a path that then someone is like oh this isn't what i had in mind <laughs> right how do you how how what's been your experience in dealing with like Peop, um, I'll say like clients, I guess, to that extent, because there is I think there's nothing more frustrating to an artist hearing than going like, I mean, it, that wasn't like quite what I had in mind, because then you're just <laughs> like, fuck, everything's yeah. ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually partially why I don't do freelance. I've dabbled in freelance a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but working at an agency which I don't do anymore either, but <laughs> working at an agency is nice because you have client service people, you have uh, product managers, right. you have copywriters, like you have people who do different roles that let you just focus on the design. But if you're doing freelance, you have to be the person who's directly communicating to the client and like keeping them on track and holding them to the things that they said previously yeah. and making sure it's all documented. <laughs> um, 
so I've definitely been screwed over a couple times by scenarios where it's just like the person didn't know what they wanted and then I didn't necessarily agree with what they wanted in the end. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah. You've, so it's, it's, it's sometimes nice. It's, it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's like a, it's a double edged sword, right? Cause like people think of, of, especially I think artists and it, but any kind of freelancer or contractor is like, Oh, they, they make their own schedule. They make their own rules. They can do whatever they want, but they don't realize that means they have to do everything. Whereas when you yeah. have that chain of command, you can be like, you know, I can deal with this or I can give this over to that person and this over to that person. I can just kind of focus like on the thing I need to get done. Yeah. And I think to be successful in the freelance design world, you have to kind of wade through a bunch of uh, crap. I don't know yeah. what your rating is. On <laughs> oh, you can cuss as much as you want. I'll be honest you with you. You have to wade through a bunch of fucking bullshit <laughs> uh, to, get through, <laughs> to get through to maybe work that you both like to do and also pays well and mm -hmm. working with people who like respect your opinion on things. Because mm -hmm. um, otherwise you're just kind of taking on things that because you have to pay the, pill, the, the pills. You gotta pay the pills, man. <laughs> pay the pills. <laughs> that old saying. You gotta, yeah, pay you gotta the get pills. those ducks cleaned. You gotta clean the ducks, pay the pills, get sponsored by our... If <laughs> yep. <laughs> we are we're learning a lot. <laughs> we are. Yeah, I haven't done any drawing, but I've enjoyed chatting about hypothetically doing drawing. <laughs> Perfect. That's <laughs> that's what I like to hear. Perfect. So and then so here we've got this is the newest uh this is the newest emote. Is it live on Steak Bike right now? Yeah, it the, is live. We got our new we got our new live. Oh, and there are some in chat that I completely ignored, of course. <laughs> Professional streamer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I okay, so all of these time lapses just start with like the same shitty drawing that I had to <laughs> I was trying to redo my <laughs> trying to redo my hypers emote and obviously this is not working out well so i dropped it and moved on to something else um, i love that it starts looking like <laughs> it starts just looking kind of like seaweed like <laughs> yeah, it's and then so it slowly bad. becomes a cartoon <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so but yeah, this is like the same file. I've just duplicated this file over and over again, mm -hmm. so I guess that also duplicates the entire process of previous emotes. Um, but yeah, this is. Oh, look at the schnoz on work in progress number one. <laughs> look at this. Such oh a my big god! Schnoz. Look at Five Nights at Freddy's new character <laughs> just unveiled. <laughs> The really difficult thing for me with emotes, I think, is trying to define a perspective and like, because I, I don't know, this falls more into, I guess, cartoon type of work or like mm -hmm. something like that. That's definitely out of my comfort zone. Um, so, yeah, this is how this is how this went. Someone recently said that it looked like a bunny and I <laughs> both both died inside and also agreed. <laughs> I think that's fine, though. Like, that's that's one of the things in cartoons, right? Like. You know, yeah. Wiley Coyote is only a coyote because we call him a coyote. I don't know if you've ever seen what a coyote looks like. It is not that. That is That's not fair. Not in yeah. any way what a coyote looks like. It's <laughs> not what it sounds like either. Right? It's like it's a, a coyote is just a really <laughs> mean dog. Like <laughs> we have a bunch of coyotes outside of uh, our house, mm -hmm. and they—I don't know—it's it's around the same time of night every day. They just like they're so loud, and they have the funniest the funniest. I was gonna say voices. <laughs> <laughs> Just chatting with each other uh, in different accents. Out. It's wild. <laughs> this one's for, they got their cousin from Australia. I don't know yeah. if I agree with them flying out at this time, but <laughs> deep throne it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Where's that cartoon? Where's the cartoon about the family of lovable coyotes who just kind of loiter in people's backyards? Aw, maybe you can make it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the problem that I have as a human being is that I think of things like that and then I have the same reaction that you just had of like, oh, I could do that. And then I'm like, <laughs> yeah. let me look at my list of things to do. Hmm. <laughs> Make a cartoon series. I'm going to slot that in there and get back to it. Mm -hmm. And then on top of the list of things to do is like write down the list of things to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, physically, you just cut out sleeping. You're like, I don't really need that. <laughs> Eating, I can skip a meal. No. Cartoons. <laughs> gotta have that Popeyes. I gotta have Popeyes. I you gotta, gotta have it. Have <laughs> Sponsored by Popeyes. <laughs> Popeyes and Doritos. Oh, 
It's a beautiful world. Uh, <clears throat> how I feel like that's something that should have happened by now. Popeyes and Doritos hanging out with each other. Like Doritos, I feel like has this exclusive relationship with Taco Bell, but I feel like they're yeah. swingers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that. Uh, I mean, a Dorito breading on chicken. I'm here for it. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Or even just like getting some of that Dorito dust on the fries because the fries are already really good. I have something to admit. Oh my uh, god! And you can end the stream if you so choose. What's up? <laughs> I've never had Popeyes before. Oh my good god! Do you have yeah. Popeyes like by you, or is it like we do? Okay. Yes. Um, I don't know that I've always had a bike because I've moved around a, a bit. Um, mm. And I, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's not always been accessible, but I think we do have one pretty close to us actually now. So if there's <laughs> one, I don't like to give guests homework. I feel like it's very presumptuous, but I, I love believe, homework. I believe you owe it to yourself <laughs> to go get yourself some Popeyes. Okay. It's only for, actually, I wonder if the French fries suck in America. Every time I, every time I talk to Americans about fast food, I remember how different our fast foods are. Yeah. The fries here, bang. <laughs> the fries are really good here, but it is very dependent on where you get them. Okay. What are some of the other differences that you've uncovered? <laughs> oh my God. Well, so there's like, okay, it's gonna sound, this is gonna sound douchey, but there's like a quality thing because like Canadian uh, food standards are just better. Like, I can see that. So everything's a little <laughs> bit more expensive, which kind of sucks, but like, <laughs> it's food. Yeah. <laughs> For the most part. Taco Bell is still Taco <laughs> Bell, it's still made out of wood pulp or whatever. Delicious, yeah. delicious wood pulp. <laughs> delicious wood pulp. <laughs> Yeah, and there's just like different, like like A and W. Apparently, A and W in America is awful. I've never had it. Apparently, Ooh. it's awful. Usually, it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, it's twenty four hours. <laughs> no, I, I was I was gonna like usually it's like oh that used to be an A and W. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they're everywhere here. See, that's what I mean. Okay. And like, and we got all like, and it's a completely different company. It's like. You know, we have like mm -hmm. this delicious Atlantic cod sandwich that comes around once a year. Oh, shout out to Atlantic Canada. And like, <laughs> and then I look I the Americans talk about A&W like it's the most disgusting, like worst option for fast food ever. And for me, it's like, that's like going out food. Like we go, <laughs> I'm, I, I got paid today. I don't have to go to McDonald's today. I can go to A&W. <laughs> A&W, put on that, that, uh, Oh, what's the? I was gonna say put on that tie, the clip-on tie. Yeah. For AW. Yeah, yeah get like a little dressed up, but not too dressed up. Does AW have a mascot in America? Uh, everything has a mascot in America, right? Because <laughs> ours is a hockey playing like like polar bear dude with like a oh. Duke. Okay. So I, I don't, don't know if I feel like that's a very deeply Canadian thing. <laughs> I feel like that's a lot of Canadian things kind of wrapped into our burger chain that we eat at. Yeah, I think Rudy the Root Bear is the <laughs> <laughs> Rudy the Root Bear. I should know this as a, no, as I as don't. a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should go after an A and W sponsorship. Roots and bears, <laughs> done. You're welcome. You can have that for free. <laughs> Perfect. So that's actually a question I want to ask. So a lot okay. of people like everyone. The thing I really love about Twitch is everyone has usernames. Like everyone's got like from the mm -hmm. biggest streamers ever to like people who just started yesterday. Everyone's got a username and there's always some kind of like reason behind it. So what's mm -hmm. what's the story behind Bears and Beats? Well, as a designer who has worked in branding, uh, there isn't a good story. <laughs> 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 it's just it's just a reference of the office <laughs> i should have you know i should have caught that fair enough <laughs> it's okay i guess um there is like a slight story so uh cowabunga aka my husband who mm -hmm. is also on twitch uh and as a moderator in my channel um sometimes <laughs> uh, he, <laughs> he uh him and I were talking at one point about doing a stream together mm -hmm. um, and like he would stream League of Legends on some days and I would stream whatever the heck I would want to stream on other days. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were trying to think of names that would work for like both of us being on a channel mm -hmm. uh, that weren't, weren't too specific to either of us, but like shared a common interest. And mm -hmm. I guess The Office was like our biggest shared common <laughs> interest at that time when we were talking about things. Yeah. Uh, so we, we just came up with Bears and Beats. Also my previous, so when I joined Twitch, I wanted to be pasta la vista um and that was taken <laughs> that's oh my god 
Everyone should go subscribe to Pasta Vista on Twitch if they're still around. That's phenomenal. They might be. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to do like a dumb pun yeah. uh, mixed with food, I guess. Uh, and then I did just beat it for a little bit, but spelled like beats. And then I felt very subconscious of what that could be taken as, Ooh. maybe. Mm. Yeah. Uh, once I became a little more familiar with the trolling crowd on Twitch. The optics so, on that are bad. Yeah. <laughs> So then, yeah, so that's, that's the evolution of the name into Bears and Beats. So, so talk to me about the early days of streaming for you, because I feel like it's I feel like it's very much the same for everybody in terms of like there's like, you know, you have one or two chatters. It's like really hard to get started until you can really start growing a community. Yeah. But I feel like there's little different like nuances to everyone's kind of journey. So take me through, take me through a bit of the, the bit of the <laughs> just beat it journey. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, the first street, so my husband has always been into Twitch, but he's definitely on the side of like watching pros play games. Mm -hmm. So I didn't fully get an understanding of it until I was like, I want to watch people play Breath of the Wild. Right. Uh, so I discovered uh, my first streamer who I got really into and like, 2017 2018 maybe mm -hmm. 2017 i think um and then i was like i don't know this seems like a fun thing to try so i had my first stream i literally pulled up the dates because i have such a bad memory of timelines <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my first my first technical stream was, I think, March 18th, approximately March 18th, 2018. Um, nice. But then I came back. I watched a bunch of Twitch. I was like, I I always take things too seriously, so I can't do this right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I watched a bunch of streams and came back and did my like third ish stream uh, June 15th, 2019. Uh, That's a and it gap. Was, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, and that was after watching a bunch of streams and just kind of like overthinking how I might treat situations or like right. how I would want to address having a stream. Uh, and yeah, it was a, it was pretty slow growth, but like it somehow took off decently and I got affiliate like a month after. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the community has definitely shifted a lot since then. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, it, it took, I think it took a while to really like build some sort of community, like the, the milestones of like, oh, we could maybe have a discord now. And, oh, maybe I should do a Twitter now. Like yeah. those, those types of things definitely came gradually. Um, so did you have yeah. kind of a goal when you first started? Because I feel like, again, there's some people who who start off on Twitch and they're like, I want to play like I want to, you know, I want to play Fortnite. Like I'm going to play Fortnite every single day. And like, I'm just going to be really funny and play Fortnite. And there's other <laughs> people who because I know that you're more of a variety streamer and I'm more of a variety streamer. So there's people who just kind of come on and like, I just want to have a good time. Like, I just want to I want to hang out. I want a good time. I want to make some funny shit happen and I want people to laugh at my funny shit. <laughs> yeah, I so I started thinking I want to play Fortnite every day and <laughs> get really good at this game. Just beat it. Uh, Signed to Cloud9, <laughs> the greatest Fortnite player oh, of yeah. all time. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I uh, so <clears throat> if we want to get like really deep into it, I feel like <laughs> I, I I've always been a very shy person and um, I am rarely outspoken about anything. So I feel like um, Twitch became like a very good thing for me in the way of being able to be myself mm -hmm. really, really freely. And then um, meeting other people who like I just naturally jived with more. Because right. I think when you're like meeting people at work or in school or whatever, it's like, OK, they're my friend, but also like school friends. <laughs> yeah, there's like that. There's like like level of separation kind of. Yeah, yeah, or like, yeah, or qualification or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I, like, it takes me a very long time actually to warm up to people so that mm -hmm. I feel like I'm fully myself. Um, so Twitch ended up being like a shocking way mm -hmm. of me kind of like feeling more comfortable in my own skin kind of, and right. like more um, open to just be myself and grow as a human a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, and <laughs> looking back on some of my first streams too, I think that I felt a lot of pressure to be entertaining and it was really cringy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was very cringy because I was mm. obviously like very self-conscious, but also like trying to be funny. Uh, and it's hard when you just have like one or two viewers or zero yeah. viewers and you're just trying to like 
dig something up from nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's, I don't know, it's been fun to, I guess, like feel like I'm growing as a person. And I feel like that's one of the main things that I get out of it. Yeah. That's cool. It's cool that, that, that like that level of performance, like that kind of like the, the performative nature of live streaming on Twitch is kind of gotten you to be more comfortable with yourself and be more open to just being like, Hey, like we're just going to have a good time. Like we're just going to relax. We're going to chill mm -hmm. out. We're just going to have a good time. Do you remember what yeah. your first stream was? My very first stream, I played They Are Billions, which Ooh. is like a strategy. Uh, I was really hooked on it at the okay. time. Um, it reminded me a little bit of like Age of Empires type of thing where you, yeah. but but not really, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was like a steampunk zombie game. Um, and I don't know, I tried to do dumb shit. Like I died and then I played like uh, in the arms of an angel or something. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> and I That's did. a classic. <laughs> That's a classic, classic Twitch bit. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I had like a camera and everything. I've actually never had a stream where I haven't had a camera. Really? Which is, yeah. Which is maybe odd because I, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel, feel like, like people. I, I think once I started actually streaming, I, I've, I've always had a camera. But yeah. when I was like first starting, I would just kind of like, I was in like college and just screwing around and just like, I played Smash with friends. So I'd like hit live or like I was playing the Hearthstone for like six hours a day. So yeah. I just like go live <laughs> and just play Hearthstone with like one of my homies just watching me play Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. That's very much, that's how my husband streams too. He actually still streams, um, but he doesn't talk to chat. <laughs> <laughs> he lets like, his fucking skills do the talking, man. <laughs> he doesn't, uh, like he streams mainly just for like his brothers to be able to watch him. But mm. uh, he, I think I, when I started streaming, I would like promote him on my channel sometimes and he would delete it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, and no. He's, <laughs> no one needs yeah. to see this. He still to this day does that. So it's not like I don't want to promote my husband. It's just legitimately like out of love, I won't promote him. Well, he's not a mod in my channel, so everyone go follow Calabunga. Oh, I think no. he was here. Calabunga TV. Scroll up in chat, you'll find him. Go, go follow him. No, don't do it. <laughs> go watch him play League of Legends or, or Fortnite or whatever he's playing. Dead silence. It's, yeah, he plays, he plays WoW a lot and does raids and stuff. So he's very, very very much the serious uh gaming side of uh our relationship <laughs> he's i mean the, i am the too pro but... <laughs> gamer <clears throat> capital g gamer yeah it's funny <laughs> i don't know if you feel like this at all but i feel weird about the distinction of being like like seen as like a gamer someone who's like good at gaming because i'm not like I tell people that I stream on Twitch and they go like, oh, you must be really good at whatever games you enjoy. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just kind of an idiot. And people just kind of like vibing with that energy. Like, that's what I've got. I watch like reality TV shows sometimes when I'm bored on stream. Like, I am not a gamer. <laughs> I also I kind of hate the term gamer, but I wonder, too, if it's partially because I've heard it also like literally on my stream. People have said, oh, you're not a fake gamer girl or whatever. <laughs> like there's that weird side yeah. of things, too. And I just I don't like using the word gamer at all. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's got it's got the connotation of like an asshole. Like <laughs> there's yeah. like cause so many people are like like that. Like it's crazy to me to see there's been so many like. And I'm going to sound so preachy, but there's been so many different like, you know, uh, like kind of evolutions, especially when it comes to Twitch of people like like more women getting on the platform and more like, you know, non-binary people and, and, you know, transgender people and all this kind of like like it's been a more inclusive space. And yet there's still just like, there's always going to be assholes. There's always going to be people who show up in a Twitch chat and just go like, actually, Breath of the Wild is not supposed to be played like that. I have played Wind Waker my entire life and Breath of the Wild is a very serious video game. <laughs> like, and it's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, it kind of, it feels kind of like whiplash almost because I feel like a lot of people take it very seriously um, to cultivate, including myself, to cultivate like a welcoming, inclusive, good community community mm -hmm. and try to filter out all the 
crap that comes along with the internet but then also like there's just so much crap <laughs> it's just constantly kind of shocking like this it, I don't know whiplash is the best way I can describe it yeah of like seeing all the just weird stuff that happens on twitch and then also seeing all of the good things that come out of it yeah, it's it's, I, it's like, the internet is the definition I think of a double edged sword. Like none of like I would not have any amount of job or career without the internet in any of the facets I've ever made money in my life. <laughs> but also I hate it here. Like I don't like <laughs> <Yeah>. it here. <laughs> I go on Reddit yeah. sometimes and I'm like, this is a hellhole. We we <laughs> just burn it all down. <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> I think it's interesting too because I that goes back to I guess my initial impression of Twitch was very much like the esports side of things because mm -hmm. um, I I don't know I even working in because I worked in marketing I worked for a fast food company that tried to get the gamer edge nice. into their marketing right and like was like we need to work with Twitch somehow <laughs> but like none of us at the time knew anything about it um, so it's yeah it's interesting the like misconceptions. Um, because my husband was also into the esports side yeah. uh, and I didn't really know much about like the smaller streamer or variety streamer or like community side of Twitch until I uh, started until I until I did yeah, until I <laughs> learned the thing <laughs> <laughs> so what we're learning here and this is an exclusive unless we have friends you were the one behind the Wendy's meme commercial yeah yeah <laughs> you eat spicy chicken like a boss guy that was all you and i'm glad no, we could i actually <laughs> i worked on white castle as a brand for a while oh nice um, which was a very much more scrappier lower uh well scrappier smaller team type of thing right um and wendy's was like constantly <clears throat> our competition <laughs> Especially from a social How do we media beat side. Wendy's. Yeah. Especially from social media. It was just like constantly a topic. Right. Actually that's a really interesting point because so if you when you were doing that, it must have been around the time that the Wendy's Twitter was getting really big and like the Denny's Tumblr, I'm sure you've heard of, Ooh, of that yeah. thing, right? Mm -hmm. So so how did that kind of affect your the way that you guys were looking at the marketing and like, like you're trying to be Wendy's, but how do you possibly be the people who created being a funny brand Twitter? Yeah. And also with the team that we had, you know, we had like one copywriter, maybe like two at, at one point we're doing everything from the, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> POC stood for point of crave, okay. which is like oh, no. POS. POS is point of signage typically. Right. But since it's White Castle, it was all like all the terminology was skewed to White Castle. So we were just throwing around like <laughs> point of crave. Like oh, it's no. just natural. <laughs> Uh, but we did everything from that to like social media to we were spread very thin across like multiple things. Mm -hmm. So Wendy's um, on the other hand probably has like a team of a few people who are just dedicated towards social media oh, yeah. and they can probably get things out pretty quickly. <clears throat> we had to go through like a, a, a belabored process of getting things signed off on and stuff, which isn't the best for social media. Right. Uh, so yeah, it was definitely like we were often inspired to be better, but then limited by reality. Right. <laughs> I not, so I don't know if you can talk about this at all, but I don't know if you know this. White Castle doesn't exist up here. I figured. Yeah. I know of White Castle from the Harold and Kumar movie, mm -hmm. and like like binging with Babish, I think did a did a burger cooking thing, and he made a White Castle burger with the onions and whatever. Mm -hmm. Is White Castle any good? <laughs> <laughs> it seems sick. It seems like like dollar burgers that you get at midnight when you're stoned in your mind. So that that's exactly is cool what it in is. my books, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny because when I worked on the account, we had to like refresh the brand to skew mm -hmm. it towards a younger audience because it was really big. Excuse me, with like actually an older audience. No um, way. I would not have yeah. seen that coming. <laughs> Yeah, who like I think traditionally would go into the stores and like spend, you know, spend their morning just mm -hmm. hanging out, eating just breakfast. Chilling. <laughs> just vibing at the White just Castle. Just vibing at White Castle. Uh, so that's that's kind of an interesting side of things. But yeah, to uh, short answer long, um, <laughs> White Castle, it's actually okay. <laughs> Um, you heard it here first. White Castle is actually okay. I was gonna say a glowing endorsement from a former employee. <laughs> White Castle is kind of okay. <laughs> and I didn't work directly for White Castle, so we were like their agency for a bit. Oh, perfect. Um, so you can say whatever you want about them. Yeah. Those rap bastards. <laughs> <laughs> 
no. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it it, uh, it it's it's okay. It's I think a lot of chain stuff in America, maybe to your point too, uh, varies very very much on the. Va- oh God, I can't talk. <laughs> this is an issue. Uh, varies based on the location. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think you need to make sure that you go to a good location, right. and then um, occasionally like. Because the sliders are made with raw beef that's like mm-hmm. fro- it's frozen. It's all laid down on the buns raw. And then you put the onions and stuff and then it all like steams together. And that's how it has like the f- special texture and stuff, um, which freaks people out. But it does pass <laughs> the like <laughs> it passes all the the expected food standards. And everything. No. I, had to work- <laughs> that, I, say, yeah, I don't know how much I trust that word. <laughs> I had to work a shift at White Castle for <laughs> Um, um, because they're like our advertising agency should really know what it's like to work here uh, so I I cook some sliders <laughs> that is phenomenal news I had no idea <laughs> I have like a picture of me in like an extra extra large shirt because that's all that they had uh, doing like a weird thumbs up to the camera in front that of the should have been the tweet right there <laughs> boom welcome to White Castle <laughs> I can thousands send it to of you if you want <laughs> yes please oh that's the thumbnail that's the thumbnail for the oh, episode no. now <laughs> I don't know what have I done <laughs> so Speaking of episode, we're we're doing a podcast. I got oh, <laughs> yeah. into, we've talked about fast food <laughs> for like a solid twenty minutes of the show. <laughs> so you you mentioned that you had a new emo you were working on. Oh yeah. I'm jazzed to see what you kind of got going on. Yeah, sorry. You just have like only it's just been that mouse on the screen this whole time. It's adorable <laughs> and it's free advertising for Sneak Bike. Boom. There you go. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So I have this little cozy one that I did, um, but I would like to redo all of our emotes and kind of like add some new ones too. Mm-hmm. So I have this little like smile, a passive aggressive smile. <laughs> I, I, was, but I love it. I love it so much. It looks it's just like a, <laughs> something about it is yeah. very funny just to look at. Yeah. It's like a, this is, everything's okay. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> mentally I am here. It's just this picture. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so what I usually do is I just like copy the canvas and then I, um, since I want it to match the colors and everything, I'll mm. just put this in here instead of being strategic. Okay. This is going to give some people, um, anxiety. Okay. Uh, I like, I don't, I, I'm Holy not hell. organized. <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> I'm the least organized individual. I actually like organized the, uh, my stacks back here. Um, because they're really embarrassing, just like all over the place. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I could work a little bit on this. I had totally lost my place of which which thing this is. Um, mm-hmm. So how does how does how, what does your creative process look like? I'm curious. Like, because I'm, I'm sure you start too. with like. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you start with like an idea, right? <laughs> And then like, it's like, you know, like a rough drawing, then it kind of just builds and builds and builds from there. And because you're like a self-taught kind of, in, in, especially in terms of uh, being an emote artist, right? I feel mm-hmm. like your creative process would be different from someone who like that, like would consider themselves confidently an emote artist. Yeah, potentially. I do a lot of reference since I don't comfortably like, uh, I don't know, this type of this type of illustration. I'm very new to, I feel like. So Mm -hmm. it's helpful to look at how other people have done the same type of like emote, (laughs) emote, (laughs) emoji, as the kids call it. (laughs) Emoji. Yeah. So I take a like I look around a lot for like or I take inspiration from like I like to use this type of emote. So Mm -hmm. I want to an emote like this for my channel. <laughs> what? Um, I want to use my emote, <laughs> my version of the emote that already exists. I respect that. Yeah, uh, which I think that the emote it, like industry is pretty repetitive and redundant. Yeah. And everybody brings like their own style to each emote that they do anyway. Um, so yeah, as long as you're not like tracing other people's emotes exactly, um, you can borrow like inspiration from things that exist out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so with this, I'm still working on a process, obviously, but I did do like some little like thumbnail sketches Mm -hmm. and I just took like a screenshot of this to bring it into the full big file. Um, 
And then I like to make, so I'm, <laughs> I'm also working at 1200 by 1200 because I, uh, I know that it's like 120 by 120 that you actually have to upload the emote to. Mm. But, uh, if I make like a mug or something in the future, I want it to be pretty high quality right. so it doesn't get pixelated and all that jazz. Um, <clears throat> I'll be honest, my emo process so far has been I either go to the person like that I get to do my emotes and go like, hey, so you know what pog is, right? Like, what can we do <laughs> to get a pog thing going on? Or I like just take a, <laughs> like, I take a screenshot of something and I go in Photoshop and kind of like screw it a little bit. I go like, what what can we do with this? Like, what do you yeah. think about this? Like, <laughs> I like the way, the way you said, can we, what can we do to get some Pog stuff? Come on. Oh, I, need, I need more Pog in my life. And how can you help me do that? Exactly. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting from like the. Uh, so <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> uh, so I've gotten emotes commissioned before, too. And mm. I've been on the other side of like being a freelance uh, artist, designer, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's been interesting to see one, what people charge for emotes. I feel like it's very low yes. compared to the design world. Yes. Um, and then two, uh, I always feel very, very uh, like stressed about being a bad client. Mm -hmm. Because I'll like over communicate what I want for each emote and like type a paragraph. <laughs> but I'm like, am I, am I the worst? <laughs> See, I have I have the opposite problem where like like I'm I'm an awful customer because like when I'm <laughs> when I'm like getting work from people, I ask a billion questions and I'm like I'm like, what do you want to do with this? What do you want to do with this and that and this and that and that? And then when I'm commissioning someone, I'm like, I, I need a pog. The cake is kind of the whole branding. So whatever you like, whatever you kind of think would be cool with that, you do that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just pay you whatever, whatever you want. And then few people will be like, I have to bully my emote artist into letting me pay them. It's very frustrating. <laughs> it's very annoying. I'm like, I am literally you are giving me like pieces of marketing. I am mm -hmm. going to pay you. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Aww. That's that's unfortunate that there's that sense of like undervaluing yeah. um, the product that they're putting out, you know. It's 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 so frustrating, especially like it happens all the time with with artists. And I find specifically like like I'll, I'll call it like traditional like drawing artists, right? Like because mm -hmm. most people who are like video editors or effects artists or stuff like that, like they have an understanding that they have like a niche talent. But I feel like because of the way that art is kind of viewed as you grow up people get to an adult age and they're really good at drawing or they're like like that, they want to be emote artists, but then they're like, oh, no one will pay me $10 for an emote. Oh. Like, yeah, there's also the, the, the flip side of like people, I think sometimes if they aren't in the field or if they're not familiar, they're like, you like doing this, why do you want money? Uh, oh. Which probably also contributes to let that fear of like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be charging this much or, um, you know, whatever the case is. If anything, that made me charge people more aggressively when I started hearing <laughs> when the, the first time someone was like, hey, do you want to, someone who wasn't a friend, because I'll, I'll do work for free for friends. Yeah. Because it's like friends and family, right? But like the second that someone I don't know is like, hey, why don't you do this thing for me? It's like, who? <laughs> Excuse <laughs> <Yeah>. me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I get heated. <laughs> Yeah, which makes sense because your time is worth some, worth a lot, even if it's technically something that like is seen as more conventionally. Oh, you like doing this? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's still it's still work. It's still a job. I I don't consider my job work. You know what I mean? Like I'm like I don't I to, know what I you mean. My, I go to my big boy <laughs> job, right? I go to my yeah. big boy job, which is primarily just kind of sitting around for eight hours and doing nothing, which mm -hmm. I view as a complete waste of their money and my time. Like, <laughs> I, I don't understand why I continue to be paid the job that I do. Hey, if anyone that pays me is watching this, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cole but, is a very productive individual. And I'm incredibly productive. a lot. Um, I definitely, to your failing company. <laughs> I definitely did not spend most of today watching other people's Twitch streams. That would be highly <laughs> inappropriate. I mean, you were doing research, right? Absolutely. On yeah. company time, on company Wi-Fi. <laughs>
we love <laughs> capitalism. But like, so I, so like, I, it's, it's funny because there is that stigma against art, especially as a career, like, and, and especially with the more digital age coming where any, like, you know, anyone can do it. Anyone can learn mm. how to be an artist, like more so than ever before. Right. Like, yeah. like that you can turn on, you can buy like a $20 microphone and like a, like a $50 camera and press the go live button and like, boom, you're on the internet. Like, you know what I mean? Which is, yeah. which it's like a, it's a career now. Like I still, when I go to family reunions, my grandma, bless her heart, will be like, so like, what have you been up to? And I'm like, oh, well, grandma, I'm like, I run a podcast and I stream and, uh, and you know, I'm working on these, like these video projects. She goes like, is that like the news? And I go like, Absolutely. <laughs> yes. To this day, yes. I'm pretty sure my grandma thinks I'm a newscaster. I am almost <laughs> positive. <laughs> my parents don't understand Twitch, but they love the people they follow on YouTube somehow. <laughs> like they <laughs> they still tell me at length about the new people they're following on YouTube. And then I tell them about Twitch and they're like, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, people wa watch you do what? <laughs> my mom watched exactly one of my Twitch streams when I was like first starting out. And mm -hmm. I was playing, I think it was when I was, I was either playing Smash Bros or I was playing Celeste. And my mom came in with, I think her name was like Tequila Snowflakes or something, which <laughs> my mother is the greatest nickname generator of all time. <laughs> that is amazing. Tequila Snowflakes. She came in and was like, like... Hi everyone on Twitch or whatever in the <laughs> chat, and I was like, "Hey man, what's up?" Get some poggies and get some poggy woggies for tequila snowflakes. <laughs> and then I, tequila, I, calm I, down. I died a bunch, and then I, I cussed a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so then after the stream ended, I texted my mom, and I was like, I was like, "Hey." Were you like, did you come and watch my stream? And she was like, yeah, I think. And I got to say, you looked like you were having fun, but you should definitely cuss less. What <laughs> if one of someone else in the family was watching? And I was like, if anyone else from the family is watching, I fucked up somewhere. Like, I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> and she says, there you go with that cussing again. <laughs> there you go. There's there's there's. There's Cole. He's the cussing one. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I, I think I have a similar story. Also, if I'm squinting a lot, it's because my contacts are just like falling down my eyeballs. And oh I my can't. God, that sounds awful. <laughs> uh, they're just like drying out. I think because I have a fan on, um, but I'm not like I'm not questioning you. I just I literally, I literally can't I see. I don't think your mom did watch your Twitch stream that one time. Yeah. I'm very skeptical about that. That sounds like a lie um, to me. <laughs> my my dad had a similar story. I think that somehow they found my Twitch channel and. Um, he said something about, uh, yeah, I came in and you're just like, fucking damn it. How the fuck? And I was like, oh, yeah, that was Hollow Knight. Was <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, that exactly is Hollow Knight, to be fair. <laughs> to be absolutely clear. That is the definition of Hollow Knight. Mm hmm. <clears throat> My, and that's all that's been discussed. No, there's been no more conversation. I, I asked my dad the last time I saw, I haven't seen, I haven't seen my parents in a while because of the whole COVID thing. But uh, I asked my dad if he listens to my podcast because I don't expect, I don't expect my mom to. My mom is very like, she's like from a small town. She's like, you know, on the upper end of 60. Like, I don't expect my mom to have a clue what the fuck I do. She's very mm -hmm. supportive and that's, that's all I need, you know? <laughs> but my dad like watches things on YouTube, but he only watches like tech reviews and travel okay. vlogs. Mm -hmm. So he's got the, there's this channel of this like rich, middle-aged couple who own a boat and they just go the whole channel is them being on this boat and going places and he always <laughs> tells me about this i don't know what it's called but they always, he always tells me about this boat thing and every time they'll post a video he'll message me without fail and be like hey have you thought of doing like like travel stuff or like <laughs> 
like, <laughs> like renting a boat or something. I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah, pops. I'll just, I'll just rent a boat in Toronto and just, I don't know, sail the lake or something. It'll be <laughs> wicked. It'll be wicked <laughs> sick, man. <laughs> Great. I do. Yeah. My parents really like the travel type of stuff too. And I love, like, they tell me all these stories about this designer who's like married um, to somebody else who can, has like a flexible type of job. Uh, they got an RV and they're traveling the country and like making money, you know, on the road. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what are you trying to tell? Me? What are you yeah, trying to like, say? What do you want me to do with this information? Like, <laughs> like, are you going to finance this new career decision you want me to make? Because <laughs> I'm down. If I can get paid to travel the world in a boat, I'm yeah. there. done. Yeah. Call me Tom Hanks. I'm ready to go. Like, <laughs> Cast me away. Cast me away. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That big, that big streamer money. People don't tell you. They're trying to hide. We're secretly millionaires, you and I. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Call us Jeff Bezos. (laughs) (laughs) We're ready to take over. (laughs) Both individually, Jeff Bezos. (laughs) (laughs) Jeff, you're listening to this. Well, I take sponsorships. I don't know if you've listened the whole time. (laughs) I don't know if you've listened the whole time, but if you go back to the beginning, Easy sell, Jeff. You Five just have bucks. Like a, you have a personal sponsorship by Jeff Bezos. <laughs> if, for some Je- reason. if Jeff Bezos has a Twitch Prime available, I would gladly welcome it into my home. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you a special role in the Discord, man. I'll make a sub Discord for Jeff Bezos. Man, I, I would be so mad if Jeff Bezos like only threw around a Twitch Prime. <laughs> 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 he's the richest man in the world and he's just like I can only sub to one channel a month <laughs> 15th is my every sub day I don't have to tell you man yeah exactly <laughs> I'm sorry I just don't get Twitch like why should I give you money for what you do <laughs> you know what and he's the exact kind of guy who would do that he'd be, <laughs> he'd be like I invented Twitch Primes like are you not satisfied what is wrong with you <laughs> I made this emote so that I can use it without subscribing to anybody. (laughs) Jeff Bezos just starts, he starts his own Twitch channel and all he does is take other people's emotes. He never streams (laughs) and it's free to sub to. Yeah, absolutely. Jeff Bezos is watching this stream and quickly drawing on his iPad this exact drawing. (laughs) Jeff, I'm so sorry. No progress for you. Uh... Jeff, I want you to know that I'm not sorry because you have yet to Twitch Prime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine, imagine a world where Jeff Bezos just runs around subbing to people. The, the front page of Reddit is just <laughs> Jeff Bezos making like a Mr. Beast YouTube video of <laughs> giving money to streamers. <laughs> there has to be like, somebody has to own that account, right? What, is Jeff, that a free username? Twitch.tv slash Jeff Bezos? Yeah. You know Does that what? exist? I'm going to figure that out right now. Live. Okay. Live on the podcast. Let's Live find on out. the podcast. Jeff Bezos. Twitch.tv slash Jeff Bezos. No fucking mm. way. I am only making mistakes with this emote. That's <laughs> why so I don't do art streams. I'm only making mistakes with my life, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, if you go to twitch.tv slash Jeff Bezos, it is an empty player with absolutely no information on the screen. Oh, I mean, they had to have done a marketing sandwich. (laughs) They had to have intentionally just covered that, you know? Yeah, they probably like, I don't know if you do you do you buy? I guess you can just make it. eh? They run Twitch. I was going to be like, did they buy it? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they had to buy it. It's really wild. (laughs) It's like a domain name where someone will buy like Doritos dot com and sell it to Doritos for like thousands of dollars. Someone just got (laughs) Twitch on your Jeff Bezos. You got to pay me out, bro. (laughs) (laughs) I've built a community out of the 50 followers I have. (laughs) There is a a couple of very interesting iterations of the the Jeff Bezos name. uh, I won't share them. Because <laughs> I'll be honest, if Jeff Bezos, if Twitch Twitter uses Jeff Bezos was around, I would have just snap ended the stream, <clears> changed <throat> my username, and come back. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, I would be welcome to Twitch Twitter slash Jeff Bezos. My name is neither Jeff nor Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what's what? What's your kind of goal with this emote specifically that you're doing? Is this the redo of the of the fine emote that you have, or? 
Um, it might end up being that. I don't know for sure. I mm-hmm. So my approach right now is to kind of try, just try to make emotes and see how they turn out and see what the reception is of mm-hmm. them. And then maybe potentially do like a poll or something so that we can rearrange them to be the right combination. Right. Um, I just really love something about this emote because it's not just purely this is fine. It can kind of be used for a multiple <laughs> multitude of situations. Yeah, I feel like. it's very context dependent because it's it, yeah. at its core, it's just a smiling person. Like, it's, yeah, it is. It is nothing more than that. But if you put it, <laughs> if if you're playing Hollow Knight, this smiling is gonna either aggravate you or bring you great comfort, depending on the context. <laughs> yeah, it kind of feels like a this is fine that could be used for multiple purposes, which is really nice when you're an affiliate and you only have limited emote slots. I yeah. Think. So how do you how how do you make those decisions? Because I find it really hard, honestly, when you have like I think I, I have like three or four <laughs> or something, and like I have to make those decisions of like I really like the emotes that I have, but then I need to switch one out for another one. Or like, I just, I get a new idea that I like more, or this is more pertinent or whatever. Like, yeah, it's tricky. Cause you want to, you want like the ones that are bit emotes or things that are more, that take more investment to be special, but mm-hmm. you also don't want them to be like cut off if you want to see them used often in chat or something. Yeah. Um, I think that's so far that's kind of like with my current emotes, which I would like to switch up direly <laughs> um, not that i'm not happy with them but i i would like to switch them up a lot um i think that i kind of position the stuff that i would want people to use the most often at like the most accessible tiers or the most accessible levels and mm-hmm. then um the stuff like that felt more extra like the i don't know like our dogs doing faces or whatever <laughs> those feel felt like better for tier two or tier three yeah um because my husband is the only one with a tier three sub <laughs> That's Which, true um, love. <laughs> I also like I'm not a fan of the fact that he decided to tier three because I don't get that money back. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's in the ether, realistically. <laughs> it's all Jeff Bezos. God uh, damn it, Jeff, not again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it's very sweet that he decided to tier three sub um <laughs> yes he has those exclusive emotes <laughs> yeah exactly um but yeah it's a really rough the, the idea of switching them up after because i think that people have become really tied to also i hope you like my glove <laughs> oh wow you got like a, you got a cool you got a cool streamer glove you got a cool well, art glove yeah so the purpose is that if you're like drawing it doesn't uh there's no friction or anything that's actually the smartest thing i've ever heard of in my it's life. really nice <laughs> yeah oh, i need just, a glove like that I'm oh just, my hey, what's I, up? see i'm, I'm left-handed <laughs> i need a glove like that in normal life yeah absolutely Do you know how and awful see. school was and just like i'd come home and just <laughs> graphite like down to here oh yeah yeah I'm it was sure. wicked man um yeah i mean this glove it can also go on your left hand <gasps> wow. oh my god oh my god we love wow. we love a multi-purpose we love a multi-purpose <laughs> queen we do yeah absolutely <laughs> we stand the, <laughs> the two-fingered glove <laughs> I mean, it's pretty slick. That's what I'm saying. It actually does look kind of cool. It looks cool in like a weird, like anime cyberpunk kind of way. I'm like kind of, oh, I'm God. sitting here and I'm kind of like, all right. I come into cool an interview, a job interview and I'm just immediately respected. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not even drawing. I'm just kind of. <laughs> You're just like, oh, why I do draw. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, I, uh. Consider myself an artist. I consider myself a drawer. I consider myself a drawer. <laughs> mm, I'm really struggling with the hair for this one. I can uh, tell you, you're you're kind of drawing and then erasing. But I think I'm, that's just art. I think this is this oh is the most man. quintessential art stream that someone could possibly watch is just two people talking while the person just erases and redraws the same lines over and over again. Just being very indecisive. Uh, and I am making the, the lines red right now because then I can go over them and actually like make final lines on mm. top that can be black or something like the final and I can differentiate what what's happening between them. Or this is just um, the emo. It's a PNG. It's <laughs> red lines and you get to decide what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, oh yeah, it's intimidating too because I think people have become used to like the hypers emote that I have, mm-hmm. uh, and 
so I, I originally started with trying to redo that one and, and like my own style. Um, that didn't, you saw part of that, right? <laughs> it was very wiggly. It was very it was wiggly. so scary. In fact, I'll show you. Uh, it, I think I hid it somewhere. Um, I <laughs> didn't want to share it. <laughs> it's just so scary. Like it kind of reminds me of that Oprah gif where she's just like, <laughs> 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 it's cute. No, it's actually so cute. <laughs> uh, it's like, it's kind of terrible. He's so <laughs> you know, out of time, man. Are you kidding me? Oh it's my so, god. So She's having the time of her life. Are you kidding me? Like, woo! <laughs> so stoked. Here, I'll make it bigger so for em- emphasis. <laughs> for the, um, the pure emphasis of it all. Uh, yeah, Holy so I hell. Have, like, I've like twitched. Uh, twitched. I've twitched. <laughs> I've twitched. I'm a twitcher. One can um, say. <laughs> I've switched up the style uh, a little bit from that to this uh, with like, I don't know, I'm trying to do a little bit of a chalky thing mm-hmm. and like a little bit of soft like shading and stuff. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I was going to say, I love the hair. I, I'm, I'm not trying to blow smoke or anything. I think the the... <laughs> the like the highlights on it. And I'm, listen, I am a, uh, what's the word? I am a plebeian. So I have no clue what I'm actually talking about. <laughs> That's not true. But I've, I've seen, I've seen paintings. I've been to like an yeah. art gallery or two in my, in my existence. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that is some, that is some primo highlighting shit. If I can be <laughs> critical and technical for a second. <laughs> Thank you. Scientific terms. <laughs> As a fellow comedian. <laughs> 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 I have also seen Eddie Murphy. I have, also, I have also laughed as a comedian. I have, I have laughed. Also, yeah. <laughs> I have made a joke, laughed at it myself, and then written it down. Uh, you could call me a comedian. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now I'll copy like the line color that I'm using and then try to do an actual outline. The the outline I'll say the the overlay of it was haunting for a second. Was, <laughs> that was the definition of anxiety. It's just you sitting there like all comfy and cozy and then just like dun, 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 with red eyes. It's like very quickly, uh, yeah, pivoting emotions yeah. in one screen. <laughs> it's, it's the it's the emote equivalent of the they, they they ask you if you're doing okay and you have to say that you're fine. <laughs> you're not fine. <laughs> Wait, that's yeah. Can I just uh, you know, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you just kind of do like you just kind of oh no, oh no, man, imagine being good at procreate. You just kind of do like one of these. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this that's the TikTok right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're on TikTok, aren't you? Well, mm, <clears throat> see, that's a that's a strong it's a strong sentence saying that you're <laughs> on a platform. You've been on TikTok before, haven't I, you? I, I, you know, I'm hip. You know, I'm hip. I'm jiggy with it, some might say. We're all jiggy with it. <laughs> We're all, I'd like to believe in my heart of hearts that I am jiggy with it. I, <laughs> TikTok is, it sounds stupid, but it, it, the idea of trying to post, like, content onto TikTok is one of the most intimidating, like, undertakings I've ever had. Like, because the Zoomers... Don't make any sense to me. And if you can't harness Zoomer energy, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I can't absolutely. do it. I, I, I go through TikToks and I'm like, this is so funny, but I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'd come up with this myself. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've, so I made one TikTok video (laughs) and I haven't opened the application since. uh, And it was just to like sass Meg. uh, Because she was talking about the fact that um, Americans don't have, like, uh, (laughs) Americans use those kettles that you put on the stove. Oh, yeah. Like the top kettles. Yeah, yeah. Um, And she was like, why don't you use electric kettles? I just found out today that you put them on the stove like a damn ancient, (laughs) I don't know, (laughs) ancestor. and and so yeah, I I made like a whole thing about how easy it is to, to to do stuff on the stove. I will say I I I have a stovetop kettle as well, but it's yeah. because when I moved out, I was very poor. So it was like you can buy an electric kettle; it's like fifty bucks, or you can get this <laughs> little piece of metal that holds water, and mm-hmm. you can just kind of it's five bucks. You just kind of huck that shit on there. Boom, tea kettle. Exactly. <laughs> easy peasy. That's- 
It is kind of fun. I think my electric kettle is only like 15 dollars. 15 dollars <laughs> 15 <ballery booze. laughs> in chat. <laughs> 15 dollars? I got 15 of the great. LeBron James himself and 15 of his closest friends bought me this uh, electric kettle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I Mine was only like 15 dollars, but I was explaining to Meg how people use like coffee pots for ramen in high school or in, in high school, in college, you know, in college dorms. Right there. Yes, yeah. sir. I'm very familiar with this guy. Concept. <laughs> yes, sir. I loved college. <laughs> I was so good at college. I was so good at it. I was so poor. I ate so much ramen, man. <laughs> I loved waking up in the morning and being like, I could buy uh, lunch today or I could buy a pack of chewing gum and have lunch for two weeks. Ooh, Done. that sounds healthy. <laughs> very. It was very healthy. <laughs> did you work through college too or did you? Yeah. Um, Okay, I yeah. was I was working full time at a restaurant at night, so I would go to college during the day, and I took broadcasting. So I had I had a podcast, two radio shows, classes, and then I worked full time. So I cool. just I didn't eat, I didn't sleep, and <laughs> and restaurants. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you're hip to this, but restaurants pay <clears throat> you like dog shit and do yeah. not give you any kind of benefits or vacation time. So. <laughs> Is that in so in Canada? Is it the I know in uh, in America it's that way too. Where like my my brother mainly worked in restaurants mm -hmm. and he was paid like below bare you know b below minimum wage because you get tips. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, I am. I was in the kitchens, so it was funny because like the way it worked is that so if you were a server, you got paid less, but then you made. Um, tips, right? So like you mm -hmm. were walking out with like an extra 150, 200 bucks a night. So like no one really complained about it. And then the kitchen people would work like at minimum or if you were there for a long time, like maybe you get like a 10, 15 cent raise after four or five years. Mm -hmm. And so there's like a there was like a system in place to where like at the end of the night, every server is supposed to give like, you know, like X percent of their tips into like a pool and then it gets spread out to the kitchen staff. But it's all completely voluntary because it's like technically like it's illegal, like like for someone to you, can, you can't force someone to give up their tips, right? Oh God, yeah. So there would be there would be like times <clears throat> when the servers or bartenders would be like, "I don't think I'm gonna, I, I don't want to tip out today because you know I, my I had customer complaints." And I'm like, "Why are you telling me this? Like, why are you? If you're gonna complain to anybody, like, don't complain to me because I don't like you anymore. Yeah. Like now, yeah. we have, now there's an issue. You are threatening my livelihood. You I are, have been <laughs> I've been are, eating this chewing gum for two weeks. For two weeks." <laughs> You bastard. I just want to buy. We had a Quiznos in my college campus and God, I've never wanted Quiznos more in my life than when I was in college. I've never, I don't even know where the fuck a Quiznos is anymore. I think they're out of business. Probably. Yeah. But if, every time I walk past the campus, I'd be like someday. <laughs> I'm getting a nine inch sub, baby. At one point, my parents dreamed of owning a franchise of Quiznos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that I, I guess that's a lesson learned. Just don't follow your dreams. Lofty dreams. I'll say it. I have <laughs> I have never been in a subway and been like, I want to run one of these sons of bitches. <laughs> this seems hype. <laughs> mm hmm. Did they just really like Quiznos? Is it like more of a story there? I feel yeah. like that's such a specific dream. It is a very specific dream. Oh, I love that for them. Some people want to be rock stars and some people want to be franchise owners in a Quiznos. I mean, they're pretty synonymous, I think. Yeah, basically, honestly. I feel like, you know, I feel like that's going to be my plan if I ever get famous is I'm going to pick some random. I'm going to do like Shaq did. Like Papa John got himself got himself outed for being racist. And then Shaq was like, now's my time. Like, I'm going to become the new Papa John. That's what I'm going to do. Is Shaq affiliated with Papa John's now? He is like a, he's like a, I don't think he's like a majority stakeholder, but he's like, he is like a, like a nine majority shareholder in Papa John's and he owns oh. like, like, I don't know, some like 25 different like franchise Papa John's. Wow. Locations. I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's why he's in all the that commercials. He's, he's just, he is the new Papa John. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Shaq. <laughs> Papa Shack. I think it was That's a huge awesome. opportunity. Jared from Subway got got canceled, oh and no one stepped in to be new Mr. Subway. 
I mean, who wants to follow up? <laughs> Imagine the, that's the lowest bar <laughs> ever. It is exactly. Yeah, it's Boom. like too low. <laughs> like you might just, I don't know. Oh, imagine the reality show, it. though. <laughs> imagine Subway Idol. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, I would have paid so much money if they could like, oh, if that was on Twitch, if that, if they, <laughs> hey, Jeff, if you're still here listening, if you want to run Subway <laughs> Idol, as you do, <laughs> I'll host it. <laughs> I'll donate all the profits back to Amazon. I don't want to get paid even a cent for Subway. I don't. I just want it to exist in the world. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I can't get over the Quiznos. I can't get over what a specific thing that is. So I love specific. that so much. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Oh. I think that they just they did like Quiznos because it was like, you know, get toasted subs, man. It was just uh, it was, it was a fire idea. <laughs> it was. Uh, there was a fuego idea, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> they absolutely kill in the game. The Quiznos guys with their toasted subs. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> did they ever end up <laughs> becoming part owners of the Quiznos? <laughs> Unfortunately, they did not. That's well, so or sad. fortunately, because yeah, I don't know if I've seen a Quiznos for a very <laughs> yeah, long I've time either. No idea if Quiznos <laughs> still exists. My parents uh, do did, slash did. My dad just recently retired. Um, bathtub repair and resurfacing. So similar. Um, speaking of very, yeah, two <laughs> very similar jobs. Um, he did a lot of like odd jobs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, his life. Um, I remember I was growing up. I, I remember once I was growing up uh, and I would help. He had like a window cleaning business. So yeah. I would just like hold the towels. <laughs> <laughs> you were the uh, towel girl. <laughs> yeah. My most, uh, it, it always catches people's eyes on my resume. Quite honestly, when I go to apply for jobs. Uh, towel but yeah, girl. Then, <laughs> <laughs> With that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, then that transitioned into getting like license and stuff for bathtub repair, which I didn't, I wouldn't have known existed. Um, if my dad, my dad didn't do that. Yeah. I guess it's not something you think about the, the amount of like, like licenses and qualifications you did get. Cause I feel like yeah. I've never needed bathtub repair in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you so haven't? like, I don't even know. I just figure I'd yell Tony really loud into the streets and then I would <laughs> find someone who does it. You know what I mean? I imagine they're named Tony and they fix bathtubs. Tony wouldn't do it as well. <laughs> See, no, cause he didn't have a license. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This fucking guy. What a scam, this Tony guy that I got off the <laughs> street. Fucking Tony, man. Fucking Tony. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of interesting. He like he um, repairs bathtubs, but also, and this might not be interesting, but I chose to introduce it with. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, but he so the, he'll actually go into or he used to go into nursing homes and like do bathtub cutouts. OK, so that uh, they would be more accessible to, um, you know, to like wheelchairs and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then there was also going into hotels and like resurfacing all of the floors of the hotel tubs mm -hmm. to be skid resistant um huh. which was like a huge thing too i guess that's another thing that i didn't even think about like i don't need yeah. bathtub repairs I, I wonder how many industries exist that we just don't in any way think about because we are just filthy artists leeching off of society <laughs> yeah because we're just a couple of comedians in this world just a couple of, of, of comedians <laughs> slash artists slash part owners of quiznos <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bezos is, 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 is. Jeff, Plus, yeah, yeah, Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos I. <laughs> Jeff Bezos I. Hmm. I unfortunately I have to say we have been talking uh, yeah, for, for, a, for a, long time. a while <laughs> and so I'm I love I love talking I want to start a fast food podcast now. I didn't realize <laughs> how long I could just sit here and talk about fast food. But we do have to get, uh, we have to get, we have to start winding down a little bit. And by winding yeah. down, I mean wrapping it up. It's time for the last segment on the show. It's my favorite part of the show. It's the whole reason I started this show. It's called the lightning round. Okay. And I, I don't want to get, I don't want to, I don't want you to be intimidated. Some people get intimidated by the idea of the lightning round. It's no pressure. Everything's it's very okay. My here. brain works real fast. Oh, I need you to know that that's the greatest <laughs> sentence anyone's ever said to me. I need you to understand that. So here's how it's going to work. I have a prepared list of uh, of this or that questions. Very simple, you know, just preferences 
first thing okay. that comes to your mind between the two answers that are given to you, just tell me what it is. I'm going to write it down. We're going to try and get through as many of these questions we can within one minute's time. After that, I'm going to compare the answers you've given me to the answers that I already have prepared to see how close we've truly become to becoming best friends. Because as we all know, the only way to tell who your best friends are with random Cosmo quizzes. And that's a fact. Yeah. Wait, so you're guessing what I'll answer? So I so I have my answers. Oh, OK, OK, OK. So I just want to basically in a in, a, in a, a way to wrap this all up and make this uh, much more about me than about anyone yeah, else. It's, it's finding out how, how <laughs> our interests are, uh, relate to each other. OK, so if we get X number of questions the same, then we can be best friends. Then but we otherwise, can be best friends. fuck you. <laughs> Absolutely. Otherwise, we'll never talk okay. again. I'm leaving Sneak Bike. <laughs> oh, shit. OK, the pressure's on. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, no pressure. Very cool. Very chill situation. Yeah, very chill. OK, I'm so, ready. I have my question in front of me. I have my timer in front of me. If you're ready to go, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. In three, two, one, cookies or cake? Oh, fuck. Uh, those cookies. Thinks fast, she does. Cats or dogs? <laughs> dogs. Computer games or console games? Computer. Pop music or rock? Pop music or rock music? <laughs> rock music. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Stuffed animals or dolls? Nah, stuffed animals. <laughs> Uh, hot chocolate or coffee? Coffee. Uh, morning or night? Night. Uh, text message or call? No. <laughs> <laughs> no contact. Text <Done>. message. <laughs> French or Spanish? Oh, well, I know French, but Spanish is more practical. <laughs> uh, summer or winter? Uh, winter. Uh, love or money? No. Uh, no. <laughs> Love. Chat, she took the coward's way out. She chose love, and I respect that. I respect that you have the idea that, <laughs> that oh, your partner may be watching. <laughs> partner versus Jeff Bezos, I don't know. I'm picking Jeff every time. I like <laughs> if, if whoever I end up with in the future, if you're ever listening to this or watching this, I'm picking Jeff. I want you to know that. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to tabulate the score, and while I do, I want you to okay. take this time to uh, give yourself your own little, this is your own little personal corner, you can give yourself your little shout outs, talk about uh, where people find you on the internet, what you're up to, your social medias, and uh, yeah, where people can find you on the internet. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch dot television at bears and beats uh twitter i think it's bears and beats too because some bastard has the bears and beats account Rat bastards. <laughs> doesn't use it um instagram i think it's oh shit is it the bears and beats uh, uh, brand consistency man um i am on instagram i do things there i'm on youtube you, you can actually now type youtube.com slash bears and beats now really that's yeah a, kudos to you i i hate having youtube.com slash <laughs> channel slash like xyub yeah. 654022 like it's really rough. it is the worst thing ever <laughs> yeah um yeah i'm in all the places all <laughs> of the places and what so what can what can people expect from from twitch.television slash bears <laughs> I love that reaction. <laughs> I don't know, man. Just, just uh, a diss hail. Just a whole lot. <laughs> uh, I chat a lot. I play games. Um, it's kind of a nice excuse for me to play games. Uh, but also, I just love chatting. So uh, you can probably find me chatting with people while I'm doing a boss fight. Um, and, and then dying yeah. in a boss fight. <laughs> Yeah, and just, <laughs> I, I consider it to be a pretty chill, welcoming channel uh, to everybody. If I do say so myself, <laughs> uh, but I play a bunch of La different games. La someone <laughs> enjoys other people's company. Uh, oh, I didn't even do the math. I was too busy ribbing. Three, six. Uh, wow, why did no I write pressure. it like this? We're all Three. watching you. <laughs> no I pressure. can't do math on stream. I, I can't like. <laughs> I can't do math normally as a human being. I don't, yeah. know if, I don't know if I told you this. I went to college for broadcasting because I haven't taken a math class since I was 
<laughs> Since five I, years old. <laughs> I think I failed grade 10 math twice, and I think I learned that math wasn't really for me, you know? I think that, mm-hmm. that was like a sign from God, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you belong in arts. That's where you belong, young man. <laughs> But I have done the math, and I want you to know that I have had so much fun talking with you. I've had, this has been a phenomenal episode. We got so much done practically. Yeah. And I want you to know that you scored a final score in our lightning round of 9 out of 11, which, while it's going to be an unfortunate thing to put on the screen (laughs) as the score, it does mean that I think percentage-wise, one of our highest scores. So maybe it's time to turn these things into percentages. Maybe that's what it's time to do in the video version of the podcast. 11 is a tricky number to do a percentage off of. (laughs) It is, yeah, but that uh, is why God gave us calculators. On the 11th day, he shone Mm -hmm. down from upon us and handed us a TI-84 and was like... Love those 12-day weeks. Well, I think we got the first seven covered in the Bible. I think they got those ones covered, so they had to start just kind of adding more for calculators and the like. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being on the show. I want to uh, thank all the people who are watching live right now on twitch.tv slash Cake. Everybody say hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, I want to thank anyone who's uh, at home listening to this on Spotify, Apple, Google, uh, uh, Podbean, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, all those hip and wild things on YouTube if you're into, if you're feeling frisky. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I want to thank everyone for listening at home. I want to thank my new best friend, Bears and Beats. Make sure to go follow them. Bears and Beats 2 on Twitter and The Bears and Beats on Instagram. <laughs> and more importantly, twitch.tv slash Bears and Beats because that's where the brand stays strong. Speaking of the brand staying strong, if you like this cool sweater that I'm wearing that you can you can hear like hey, you can hear this through the microphone, huh? There oh, oh for the audio listeners. That's what the sweater sounds like, and you can get that at littlekinkcake.com slash merch. It's a very nice sweater, okay? Good quality stuff. Go check that out. Otherwise, I just want to thank our best friends, Seth Feldman and Isabel Wing for the outro and intro to our show, Let's Be Best Friends. That's all the time we have for this week. So remember that your mom is your best friend at one point. So give her a call and we'll see you next week. <laughs>